Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This time we are making yet another pair of speakers. And here are the drivers. Uh, this is the tweeter, a Monaco one, a little bit uh, bigger dome tweeter with uh, more power handling. This one is going to be crossed at uh, 3500 Hz. And here are the mid ranges. They are two because uh, these are not the most sensitive speakers, so we need two to gain the sensitivity. Uh, these are speakers that uh, some shop uh, brought too many and they failed to sell them, so they had to slash the prices and slash the prices again and slash the prices for this woofer also. So uh, these speakers were amazingly cheap and as it turns out it has a reason. But we won't get to this now because we have the crossover components. Uh, this is the crossover for the high uh, high frequency driver, 18 dB per octave. This is uh, a crossover for the mid range. You may be wondering about the two black capacitors. Yes, these are capacitors from a computer power supply, but when connected in reverse series, they made actually a quite a nice uh, capacitor with uh, super high voltage good for these two mid ranges and it's crossing them over at 200 hertz from the bottom at 18 db per octave and 3000 hertz from the top at 12 db per octave and for the woofer we have a 10 milli inductor and uh, this is probably the reason why most uh, speakers aren't crossed at 200 hertz because this inductor is uh, expensive and this particular one is not really big enough uh, the reason why i've made uh, the uh, crossover into separate pieces is because of uh, better separation and uh, uh, less chance of crosstalk between the components and he also has some 3D printed pieces. Uh, this one is a screw in, screw out uh, base, uh, base port or base reflex tube, or call it however you want it. Uh, this allows me to change the tuning of the box depending on the situation. This uh, long and uh, thin one uh, is uh, tuning the box at some uh, 30 hertz or 28 to 30 hertz, uh, giving me a uh, good uh, low range but uh, if used with a subwoofer uh, i can just uh, take a piece of uh, drain pipe and uh, for this i've printed th just the uh, just the screw part now uh, let's take a look how i've been making these this is the internal structure of the box. Uh, it's uh, glued and screwed and caulked together. It's made from uh, three pieces of, uh, of particle board. It's not an ideal material, but uh, when put together properly, it uh, makes for a, a quite a sturdy uh, box, uh, even though it's uh, a bit uh, heavier than it uh, needs to be. First of all, we have to uh, dress uh, those uh, screw heads uh, to not have uh, dimples underneath our carpet by uh, mixing some two component putty and going to town with the scraper. Uh, then it's uh, on to the final sanding. Uh, on the top you can see two uh, two grooves uh, these are gonna come in handy when uh, doing the carpeting as you can see it's made from uh, many different colors and shapes <laughs> this material would end up in a dump site <laughs> for uh, painting the uh, uh, the buffer i've used a black stone chip this uh, thing covers uh, really nicely especially if you have your nozzle clean then you can go much faster and uh, while we are watching me uh, building the speakers uh, let's uh, talk about those cheap drivers, especially the woofer. As it turns out, a speaker with a Kevlar membrane 
uh, can have a uh, manufacturing defect uh, as uh, when the uh, Chinese comrades were making the speakers uh, they probably stretched the uh, fabric of the uh, of the Kevlar the Kevlar, Kevlar fabric too much and that uh, that actually made uh, tiny holes right through the membrane it's uh, very unusual but uh, it did happen and this uh, 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 the speaker really uh, had uh, this characteristic uh, it uh, resonated uh, in a ported box uh, lower than it should it acted like a uh, speaker with a higher mass and much uh, sm smaller effective area. Uh, the sound was uh, like uh, if uh, if a uh, pole uh, vent hole was uh, covered, like the air rushing sound. And uh, I've actually I was uh, prepared to junk the whole speakers because. Uh, these were made uh, specially for the for the woofer and uh, it would be difficult to adapt them to uh, some uh, some other speaker and it uh, it wasn't easy but uh, in the end i uh, i've compensated with a bit of uh, acrylic uh, clear coat and I've clear coated the membrane and that solved the issue. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, who would have funked it <laughs> because uh, uh, because it's, it's really unusual to have a speaker with a million tiny holes uh, right through the membrane. <laughs> Uh, even the TS parameters were saying uh, the same story. Uh, on in the in the free air, the speaker acted uh, completely fine. Uh, when put in a closed box, there was some sound and uh, some noise, some uh, parasitic air uh, rushing through the membrane and when put in the uh, ported box uh, in the ported box the internal pressures are uh, higher than in a closed box because of the resonating uh, body of air in the port tube uh, the uh, speaker uh, produced a really really loud uh, air rushing sound uh, the closer to the uh, resonant frequency the more of the sound there was <sighs> it was it was quite something uh, now we are watching me <laughs> uh, doing the carpeting I'm using a spray on adhesive and uh, a uh, proper uh, proper carpet for uh, for boxes it's for automotive boxes but this uh, this stuff is super stretchy and uh, it's a pleasure to work with as you can see i've made the top and bottom uh, with uh, with the back of the box i've cut the carpet uh, a bit uh, uh, bigger than they are the the grooves uh, now i'm uh, opening the the holes so we have uh, nice places to grab the box uh, let's cut a another, another piece of uh, a piece of carpet about yay big and i go to town Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, thing about this box, but that was uh, really new for me, was the way I've uh, made the crossover, because this was my first box uh, where I went the whole nine yards or the whole mile. Or I went the whole way, and 
actually uh, built a built a box and put the speakers into it and measured uh, measured it with with a REW software with a calibrated microphone. Actually got all the characteristics and imported them into the XSIM software and actually simulated the uh, the crossover properly. Uh, it uh, turned out to be uh, very useful, and I've managed to uh, uh, I've managed to uh, get the get the characteristic flat from uh, uh, from about 100 hertz up to the 18,000 hertz with uh, a bit of DSPing. Uh, this box is uh, able to go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz which is quite something for a single box here we can see how i'm uh, cutting the carpet a few millimeters left from the groove and uh, now with a scraper i'm pushing the the bit of the carpet into the into the groove which makes nice uh, nice line that's uh, crisp and sharp i'm gonna cut a bit of excess of the of the carpet apply some glue These uh, these speakers, uh, they have uh, their name. They are called the salutes because uh, the speakers are the sal speakers. But uh, it's also my salute to uh, to the passive uh, passive speaker with a built-in crossover. Uh, from the f uh, from the start i thought that uh, these would be my last uh, passive speakers but with this newfound knowledge of uh, proper uh, crossover uh, measurement and simulation i may i may do some more here you can see the detail of the uh, of the joint uh, between the two pieces of carpet in the in the groove now dress up the uh, dress up the um, how is it called it it's a corner <laughs> once again cutting excess of the of the carpet a bit uh, right from the groove and pushing the carpet into the groove so it's nice and mm, nice and straight now cutting the excess from the other side make it nice and neat apply some glue and stick it together yay how about uh, these uh, these corners 
and you just clumped it up and cut the excess and it's uh, it's super super nice to work with this kind of carpet <laughs> actually the carpet was the most expensive part of the box so it better be <laughs> And another, another corner is made. And let's do the last side. Start from the front, line the carpet up, apply some glue. Shielding the parts you don't want to spray on by the with the piece of cardboard stick it together dress the corners The glue I'm using, uh, this is uh, the 3M Super 77. Uh, it's uh, nice that it does not make a big mess, but it's a bit more expensive. The first uh, half of the box I've made with a cheaper glue. It was also uh, usable, but uh, uh, less expensive. using a straight edge to cut through both of the layers of the carpet and uh, removing the excesses and that makes a nice uh, cut line to to join the pieces together once again doing the doing the edge Cut the carpet few millimeters left from the groove. Push the carpet in with the spatula or scraper, just something thin and sturdy to push the carpet in. Cut the excess. apply some more glue and rinse and repeat uh, these boxes uh, uh, these are made uh, uh, to be kind of uh, party speakers like a uh, not a PA speakers uh, for small parties or sm small weddings uh, I rate them up to 50 people <laughs> and uh, these are like uh, to provide a better quality sound than a typical uh, DJ or PA speaker would uh, would provide the compression drivers in the PA speakers they have a harsh sound they are really powerful and sensitive but uh, they are kind of uh, harsh sounding uh, the dome speaker, the dome tweeter in this uh, box uh, has uh, much uh, much uh, less aggressive sound and uh, also uh, these have a wider coverage. Uh, these are speakers for close listening. 
uh, and listening uh, in a, uh, all the different from the all the different angles like uh, you don't have to be in a perfect spot uh, to hear the speakers uh, playing their whole range uh, these are made specifically for the like small parties as I said small weddings uh, about 50 people and uh, giving them the best uh, sound quality I can provide this is why I'm making these and push the carpet in maybe trim some out and push it in This job was uh, was not that bad. Uh, it took uh, about uh, half an hour for s every every box to put the carpet on. Now I'm uh, mounting the screw uh, port tube. Uh, on the left from the port, uh, there is already a uh, receptacle for the. Uh, for the stand, for the speaker stand yep. this seems to fit nicely now let's uh, mount the uh, the speaker connector also 3d printed with no connector <laughs> just a, uh, just a dish or something like this the tweeter and the two mid-ranges <coughs> I'm actually uh, really happy with my decision to uh, uh, use uh, these two mid-ranges because of uh, uh, the uh, when uh, uh, the mid-ranges are uh, uh, crossed over at 200 Hertz they play everything from 200 Hertz up to three and a half kilohertz which is the whole uh, uh, range of uh, many instruments like piano and all the voices are in this uh, in this space and uh, this uh, this um, frequency spectrum being played uh, by single speaker uh, makes for very accurate and uh, well-defined sound these are the coils the small one was not big enough uh, the middle one was uh, big enough and uh, the uh, biggest was uh, way too heavy and also sufficiently sized <laughs> uh, for this uh, for this try i was uh, mounting the biggest one because i still hadn't uh, cracked the issue with uh, with the holy uh, holy speakers so i thought that uh, even the middle uh, middle inductor was uh, too small so I've mounted the biggest one I have I'm using this uh, kind of uh, glue or something uh, I've got it uh, for cheap but uh, this thing sets up very slow but uh, it sets up sets up resilient <laughs> it's uh, it's really quite some quite some tough material it sticks to anything <laughs> and everything <laughs> and let's uh, put the coil in now I'm putting in a, a tweeter crossover 
uh, looking at the footage now uh, I've uh, left uh, way too long the long wires <sighs> when I uh, gonna uh, go inside uh, again uh, in the future I'm gonna uh, shorten the wires because this is just a mess <laughs> I I don't like to look at <laughs> look at it I've left the, the wires way too long but it was uh, it was nice and convenient to to wire up and put a blob of the of the glue and stick the stick the crossover in this is the speaker uh, with uh, its membrane still not uh, not lacquered this will come in later <coughs> and let's uh, mount it up I'm actually using a uh, mm, like uh, nuts uh, on the on the other side because uh, normal uh, wood screws would not be uh, strong enough and also they would uh, uh, probably be good only for a few <laughs> for few screw ins and screw outs so uh, I'm using a metric uh, M M5 uh, no M4 bolt something like this The top screw is uh, on a difficult, uh, uh, difficult place. So the top screw is uh, just a wood screw, but it has more meat to uh, dig into. So, all right, uh, let's unbox a speaker stand. <laughs> These ones are quite nice, uh, cheap but uh, really good quality. And put the speaker on. Hey, looks good. Uh, let's screw in the port tube and connect uh, all the crossovers in parallel. And here they are. They are quite a big boxes, but uh, they do sound really, really nice. I'm super happy with them. All right. Thank you for watching. And goodbye.